Yes, my name is Helen Hed and I'm a librarian. I'm a PhD in biology, so I'm very good at stuff that natural science students need. But I'm here today to tell all of you about something you need to know about the library. How to use it, where it is, and what you can do and cannot do. The most important thing you need to know about the university library and what you're allowed to do there is that you're very welcome to come and use it, to use our collections and use our databases, sit here and study and do work in groups. So you're allowed to use the library for studying and for reading from opening hours in the morning at 8 until we close at night. You're allowed to fika. Swedish fika, if you don't know it yet, you will know it, but it's definitely forbidden to eat. So when you feel hungry, you should leave the library, go and have lunch or dinner if you're working late, come back and do some more studying. If you need help, there is always librarians on duty. Just find us. Well, today I forgot my name tag, but we usually have a white name tag on us or otherwise you usually seem to be able to recognize a librarian when you see one. Most of us speak English. Uh, some of us don't think they are very good at it, but we understand what you want and we can help you with your needs. We will be very happy to show you how to search and where you find the books and the journals you're looking for. Our opening hours are considered to be very generous. So if from early morning to late night, you, but you will get exact information later. And information is always available on the web and on our doors. So if you forget, just check the web. We have uh, our lots of collections in the library. You would think that we wouldn't have to have different collections, but they have been sorted from different standpoints. Uh, one collection is the student textbook collection, where we have books for new students. And then we have the main collection in the study hall. And in the open stacks and the closed stacks, we have several different collections. And if you can just sort of forget what I just said and trust the search tool to tell you where each item is, this will be no problem. It's a lot of history behind this division into different collections, but that doesn't really matter. All that matters is that you find the search tool, look up the book you need and go and get it. And if you don't understand the location code, we will show you. I could say something about how much there is in the library. We think there is something like 1.5 million different titles and something in, on the order of 28,000 different scientific journals. But it's difficult to give exact numbers. But I'm pretty sure that you will find what you want, especially if you want scientific articles. They are not housed in the building. Most of them are electronic. So even if you're not on campus when you need an article, just go to our website and look it up. And when I'm on the website, you should always use your UMU ID to sign on when you start using the library search tool. That way you will guarantee that you can access the electronic article in full text and not just the information about it. And now comes a tutorial that shows you in a few simple steps how to do this and how to search and find materials. This video will give a short introduction on how to find peer-reviewed articles using UMI University Library's search tool. Go to UMI University Library's web page. The search tool of UMI University Library is on the first page. I'm going to give you an example of a search. I want to search for peer-reviewed articles about the health of unemployed youths in Sweden. The keywords I will use in this example are unemployment, health, youth and Sweden. If you're unsure which words to use, look in a term dictionary for your subject or a dictionary. It is important when you search that you exchange keywords and find synonyms and try different searches. This will not be shown in this video. I write unemployment youth health and Sweden. To search I click on the blue button to the right with the magnifying glass symbol.
To limit my search to peer-reviewed articles, I select peer-reviewed articles in the column on the right hand side. I click on the symbol peer-reviewed articles. Even though I have selected peer-reviewed articles, I have to make my own assessment whether or not an article is peer-reviewed. If you are unsure, check out UM University Library's web pages about scholarly articles or talk to a librarian or your teacher. On the right hand side, there are further ways to limit the results, for instance by publication date. I click on the publication date and limit my search to articles published between 2013 and 2018. I click on Refine. On the right hand side you can see which fil filters have been used. In this case I have refined my search to peer-reviewed articles published between 2013 and 2018. Based upon the keywords and the filters used, I retrieve 1808 results. In the list of results we can re receive information about each article. For instance, title of article, authors, name of journal, and other information. There is more information about the article if you click on the title. It is often possible to get a summary of the article under description. You can also get further tips for searches under subjects. For full text, click on the full text link in green. Sometimes you are directed directly to the article. Sometimes there is a page between the library search tool and the article. By clicking on the link full text available, you retrieve the article. The PDF may be located at different places on the article page depending on the publisher of article. To have access to an article off campus, you need to log in using your UMU ID. More information is available under off campus access. If you want to know more about searching for peer-reviewed articles, ask a librarian. It is also possible for on-campus and off-campus students at UMI University to book an appointment with a librarian. For more information, take a look at our web pages. Good luck with searching for peer-reviewed articles and thanks for watching. Now, maybe you will not be satisfied with just scientific articles. Maybe your teachers have told you they had to look up specific books and read a chapter from this book and half of that. Now, we probably have that book and if you want to borrow it, just look it up in our catalogue and you will get the location for it. And then you can borrow it for either 14 days or 30 days if it's available. Someone else might have borrowed it. We do not have class sets of books only one to a few copies. But as long as you return whatever you have borrowed, you can keep borrowing as much as you like. Uh, there is no limit to how many books you can borrow. So I usually say that if you can carry it home and if you think you can read them before the end of the borrowing period, it's okay. But remember that if you haven't read them finished, you have to extend the loan period. Copyright is important. You don't want your materials to be stolen by someone else and have another student put their names on your papers. So, you are allowed to copy and you're allowed to copy quite a lot, but that's thanks to the fact that the university is paying a fee to a copyright organization. And also that because some of the publishers that we are buying materials from are giving extra uh, usability to students so that you get used to using their materials. But please respect that you can't copy a whole book. You're allowed to copy maybe a chapter. And um, to be able to copy, you must have the UMU card and you must attach an account via something called Payex. And uh, you have to put in at least 100 Swedish crowns to get this to work. If you have any problems with this, you have to get in touch with Info Center. 
because here at Dume University it is Info Center that is administrating the library card and uh, everything connected with the UMU ID. Fika is allowed in the library because we know that you will get hungry and want to eat something to keep your stamina up. We don't want you to eat in the library because it smells and it gets lots of trash in the trash cans and it gets nasty. So please go out and have lunch in a nice environment and leave the library for reading and working. And uh, there is one place where you are definitely forbidden anything, eating or drinking. And that's when you go down into the stacks. We are so afraid that we should get bugs that eat the books into our collections. As long as we can keep the bugs out, we are very happy. So do not bring any food or any drink down into the stacks. Keep it above ground and everyone will be happy. And where are we? Well, right now I'm sitting in well, basically the middle of the study hall, which is part of the main library. And we also have other locations. We have one in Universum where there are lots of group rooms. And then there's a medical library across campus on the hospital side. And there is also one more library down by the river at the arts campus, which I suggest you should visit just because it's a beautiful place, because, but it's our very, very smallest library, maybe a hundred square meters. So come and visit us here at the main campus, at the medical library or down by the river. And if you have any questions about the library, our services, what you can and cannot do, Feel free to use our contact form on the web or visit us and ask, our quest ask questions to us straight over the desk. We will be there and answer your questions. I'm Helen Heard and I'm a librarian and I love my students. Please come and let me help you.